Hey guys, good evening. Welcome to Devil's Advocate Podcast. Um, the aim of this podcast is to essentially hear the other side of the story and hear how the other, um, hear other perspectives. I'm joined today by Mr. Steve Jordan, all the way in the States. How's you, how are you doing, Steve? I'm doing good. How are you doing? I'm, I'm fine, thank you. Um, it's a nice beard you're growing, man. It's just not, <laughs> my beard is just here, man, but <laughs> what can you do? Um, takes time, me, takes time, man. I know, honestly, it's a long time. And and then we have Charles. Um, how how are things with you, Charles? I'm good. Um, nice meeting you, Aaron. No worries. That's fine. Nice meeting you too. So we're going to be discussing um meritocracy. Um, so if we just to um, let's talk about what meritocracy actually is. So the definition of meritocracy is, um, according to um the dictionary, it says a society governed by people selected according to merit. So it's to do with how good you are rather than what background you come from. And they're the, they're the influencer going by the name of Molly May. And um, she essentially came out and said um, that people should just work hard for what they want and everyone will um, get what they want in the end, basically. But she made it sound, it came across as very crass and very, she wasn't aware of what exactly she was saying because everything sounds great in principle, but then you also have things like um, social class, um, especially social class, which is seems to be the number one reason as to why people cannot access certain opportunities. So it's easy to just say, you know, do better and you'll get what you want. Sometimes it's not as simple as that, especially as she's going out with her, with her, um, her, her boyfriend, who's the son of, I think it's um, what's the guy's name, the boxer, um, something Fury, Tyson Fury, his younger brother she's going out with, and they come from like a very poor East Eastern European gypsy background. So that's so you know it come it came across as quite insensitive. So I'll just throw the question out there to you guys: What do you guys think about um, meritocracy? Is it a scam? What do you guys think? I'll, I'll start with you, Steve. What do you think? Um, I think meritocracy is is probably the single best metric. Uh, by which we can measure success um, and by which we can measure results as well. Um, it, it, it immediately implies the best person for the job has to um, or, or can or should be the person for the job. Um, mm -hmm. We don't want uh, less than the best for what we do, right? We've all heard that old argument about, you know, if I'm going to have surgery, I want the best doctor in there which yep. requires a certain degree of merit because they have to do better than everybody else to be the best. And there, there comes with that an inherent ability to, um, to process information, to learn the materials, to yep. do everything that is required to surpass everybody else in mm -hmm. their field. That's the guy that I want. So. Yeah, that's, 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 that's very true. Um, like, for example, I'm a big football player. Um, sorry, I'm a big football fan. Well, you guys call it soccer in America, but um, what I read a study the other day that in the Premier League, which is our top top flight um soccer league or football league, I should say, um, only about zero point five percent of players actually make it into that league. So you're getting the cream of the crop. So I understand what you're saying about meritocracy, but then the arg other argument would be the idea of what social class is, and some people would argue that they're personal choice as to who is the best can only take you so far because some people are simply born into backgrounds that may not have the same opportunities than everybody else. So, you know, for example, you look at a couple of years ago with the, the, um, the university scandal in America where people were found to have been literally paying off people to get into these universities simply because their dad or their mum is friendly with the dean. So that's yeah. nothing to do with meritocracy, which is where Charles comes in, because I know Charles is going to be arguing against the meritocracy. It's an interesting point that he makes, though, Charles, isn't it? Because Steve is right in what he says in terms of you needing the best person for the job. But is it always as simple as that? Um, okay. Um, so thank you for having me in this conversation. Um, first of all, let's circle back to the definition of meritocracy that you gave, which is a, a system in which political power is held by people who are the most qualified. And then you want to ask yourself, is there such a system? Does it exist in any country? Does this exist in any society? You know, the thing with meritocracy is that it sounds good in theory. It is what it should be. 
but is that what is obtainable in reality? You get, you want the best surgeon to, to actually carry out your surgery, but <laughs> are you actually getting the best surgeon? You want the best person to be president, but when you look at the selective processes that brings out the person who becomes president, are you actually getting the best person for the job? You want the best person to be a, a, Supreme, Court, a Supreme Court judge, you understand? But in what society do you find it obtainable that it is purely based on merit that this person attends this office? Or it is principally based on merit, you understand? Because there are many mm -hmm. factors that affect the outcome of anything, you understand? So to me, the argument for meritocracy is a theory, is an ideal which we aspire to, which we keep working towards. But I don't think it's, it's obtainable in practice. And anyone who thinks it's obtainable in practice is, is looking at it from an angle which is not nuanced enough to appreciate the various factors that come into how people attain the positions that they have. Okay. Steve, what do you think about that? Um, I, th I think that me and Charles are actually probably going to end up agreeing on more things than we disagree. Um, because I do agree with him to, to a certain degree, but the problem is, is where he doesn't make it clear is the way in which we measure these, these results and, and how we measure what areas we hope meritocracy to succeed. So if you take, uh, you know, I'm a mechanic, for example, right? Okay. Well, my boss can, can measure exactly how good I am by the number of cars and how accurate I am in my diagnostics and how many cars I can get done in a day, right? So there's, there's, a, there's a quantifiable, quantifiable measurement. Um, but when you get into things like, like, I mean, Charles made a great example with, with politicians. There's nothing really measurable there is it, because there, it, it's such a complicated process. Mm. And when we have politicians in there and say, and they say, well, we're going to do this and we're going to do this, but they don't do any of that. It's not as simple as that, right? Because we have laws, especially in the U S that are 500, a thousand, 25,000 pages long. There's no way one Congress, uh, Congress person or, or, or representative can, can possibly read all that by the time that the law comes to the floor. Mm -hmm. And so on top of that, you also have things in the law that have nothing to do with the law, <laughs> right? Yeah. And so you might, you, might, you might vote nay on a law because it has certain, um, certain components to it that you did not agree to that have nothing to do with what you're actually wanting to do with the law. Right. And we saw this a lot with the, with the COVID mm -hmm. bills, right? Um, both Republicans and Democrats were trying to throw stuff in there to meet their own needs for other stuff. No, it's like this needs to be for this. And so the, the, the measurement problem becomes a serious issue in, in institutions such as, as such as politics. But for people like me, it's, it's a daily it's a daily reminder of, of, of being able to measure success in, in a, quanti a quantitative way, quantifiable mm. way. I mean, I, for me, it's more to do with um, I've always fe felt that money um, and social class and where you come from and who you know as well plays a big part in it as well. Um, for the most part. I know many people would make the argument that maybe race has something to do with it as well. I'm not too convinced because that hasn't been my experience, but then I don't want to deny someone else's experience. So we'll put that aside for a second. But when it comes to class and stuff like that and money, um, for people who have connections or people who have friends on certain boards in top, institu top institutions, a lot of these people may not actually be qualified for the job. But they're simply there because my dad knows this person or blah, blah, blah. So it can be quite difficult to measure. I know there has to, I know there's a line between the the objective and the subjective where you have the objective in what you were saying before, Steve, about um, you being a mechanic and how you can objectively measure that by the amount of cars that you fix. Then you also have the subjective thing when it comes to Charles's point about politics. I mean, when we say the best person for the job, if it comes down to it, it comes down to a voting process and people will think that, well, it's not necessarily about who's best for the job, but who is not as bad as the other person. So it's not, that's why I know with American politics as well, it's like it's less to do with who you should vote for, it's more to do with why you shouldn't vote for the other person. Most people that I know voted Trump because they didn't want Hillary in and vice versa a couple of years ago. So it can be quite difficult between that line between the subject and the objective. Charles, what do you think? Um, 
I think the problem of measurement is is exactly the problem with meritocracy. How do you measure to what extent anybody holds any position? You understand is due to meritocracy or due to other factors. Not forgetting that we're humans. And Aaron, it seems you're, as if you're making my argument for me. You know, there are certain people who get into certain positions, not because they're the best at it, but mm-hmm. because they have someone who is in a position of influence, who is in a position of power. Say, for example, if a man sets up a company and the man is going to retire in, in five years' time, he's been grooming his son to take over the company. Yep. By the time he steps down, his son, even though his son is comp- competent to an extent, are you going to tell me that his son is the most competent person in that organization to run that organization? If you want we to base know. it merely, if you if you wanted yeah, to base know. it merely on 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 meritocracy, then him being the the son of the man who found the company should not be a factor that plays into it in the first place. But that is a very big factor. You understand? So the idea of meritocracy, it's, it's, it's precisely the problem of measurement that just boots it out of, of, of the way. I do understand that there is an extent to which you have to be competent enough to at least do the job to a basic level for other factors to kick in. But if you wanted to base it based on how well this person, objectively, how well this person is the best, I don't think it always turns out that the most, the most meritocratic person or the, most pers- the person who had the best skill is always at the top of it. That's true, but bear in mind, Can I respond Charles. To that? Really, I'm going to I'm going to let you in in one second, Steve. But I could make an argument, Charles, just to rebut that. I could say that what you're saying is correct, but then we also we have to realize that we're talking about a very, very small group of people. As society at large, we have to have some kind of objective standard by which to measure someone. It's like when you go for a job interview, they're going to look at your um your 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 CV as we call it in America as we call it in the UK or um for Steve it might be called your they call your resume your resume, and they'll look at the amount of experience that you've got um how you're good at doing certain things they make a decision based upon that, for the majority of us meritocracy is what we have to go by, so it depends really on your background but Steve what are you going to say go on. So what what Charles is bringing up is actually um, the argument against meritocracy uh, or support for the meritocracy in, in, in a way like he's not specifically arguing for that but he's, he's exampling the exact reason why a meritocracy would be immediately better than what is there before right so i think a better example is trump right so trump had how many of his kids were in positions of authority and power in his administration like three of them Right. So there's no merit in that. There's no way that I can say that any of his kids had any merit to be there. Right. Mm -hmm. That's an example of how meritocracy would have done better had he had people in there that were competent enough to do the job. Yep. And as far Mm -hmm. as like a business is concerned, I think we have to take a look at that in a more in a a more uh, a more uh, objective sense in being that if you've got a, 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 a man who, or, or a woman who creates a business, right? And it's a, a successful business. One would have to assume that the child that is going to replace them is going to be privy to information. Not everybody else in the world will be like, mm-hmm. um, you know, production standards, um, product, uh, product attainment, uh, materials, um, manufacturing processes, the best person to go for what job. So there's going to be, there's going to be an inherent knowledge that that child is going to grow up with that nobody else will, which would argue that person, that child is probably going to be the best to run the business because they know more about the business than anybody else. So again, we have an argument for meritocracy. I think Mm -hmm. the part where me and Charles really do agree on is that we can see, we understand that people mistake meritocracy for something else. They assume that because someone paid to get into college, that immediately v- invalidates merit. No, it doesn't, because they still have to get enough good enough grades. Uh, yep. and even if they do graduate, they still have a system. The society has a system. Whereas if you go in and you apply for a, you know apply for a job, let's say you're a super rich kid, right? You're you're the the son or daughter or or non-binary individual who who whose parent is ex- extremely wealthy, right? And they pay your whole way through college. They, 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 you know, backdoor deal you into the school because your grades suck so bad in high school, right? Mm-hmm. Now, let's say you go through all that whole process. You, you buy off every single pro- 
professor and every single um, uh, person in your way, and now mm -hmm. you're out into the job field, right? Yep. Now you have people who are your peers who can tell that you are not as good as you say you are, mm -hmm. and you're not going to last very long. It's true, Charles. So you get exposed. Sense, you get exposed horribly. I've seen it happen to people. Yeah. You're right. But go on, go on, go on. So uh, again, we have a system of meritocracy which can filter out the bad actors in that. So if they want to waste their money sending their kid to a college so that they can fail later, I don't really feel bad for them, mm -hmm. right? But what I do feel bad for is someone who kicks ass every day, moves mountains to get their goals attained. And uh, I mean, we a couple of us, at least most of us know who Dr. Mason is. She has struggled through the worst kind of experiences in her life. And now she has three letters behind her name. You know, she, she has a PhD. She came from nothing. And now she's this incredibly amazing, beautiful, intelligent person who mm -hmm. absolutely kicks ass at everything that she does. Because the merit is something that she earned during that process. And mm -hmm. that's not something that anybody can take away from her. Mm -hmm. She is solid, right? But if you try to fake anything else other than that amount of genuine ability and genuine go get it toughness, it's, you know, the, the result's not going to be there. Mm. Charles, what do you think about that? He makes a good point though. All right. Yeah. He, he's making a good point. Um, but the thing is, you know, your competence isn't going to matter if your father is the owner of the company. Your competence isn't going to matter so much if you are the heir apparent. You might run down the company, but you know, it's it's not going to matter on 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 who who gets to take over the company because there are other factors that have come into play here. But I, I really want us to center this conversation on okay, are we saying um, you know meritocracy is an ideal that we should aspire to? or that meritocracy is what is currently obtainable. Because I can tell you for a fact that for, for every one of Dr. Mason's that you see out there, there are probably a hundred of, of her who have gone through that same, same process that did not get where she is today. So are we going to use her as the exception, as the rule? You understand? But the fact that she was able to weather the storm and she's come out so, so great and she has three letters be behind the name and, and, and all that. Is that true for everyone who's ever found themselves in her situation? There are certain well, factors. Let's, let's take, for example, let's say starting up a business. We want to say um, there are many factors that, that comes into starting up a business. There's capital, there's, there's, there's the human element, there is, um, there's land, there's, there's so many other factors of entrepreneurship as they used to call it, you understand? Can one look at all those factors and just say, you know what, once you have capital, you're good to go. You might have all the capital in the world, but you, you, don't, have the, you don't have the managerial skills. You don't have the proper human resource to manage that business. The business is going to fail. So mm -hmm. my, the point I'm driving at is, as much as meritocracy is an ideal that we want to aspire to, I don't think that using um, examples of the, the deviations is, is an appropriate way of upholding or of showing that meritocracy works in practice because it could easily just have been the other way around for Dr. Mason. Well, I mean, that's, that's very true. I mean, okay, I understand what you're saying to a certain degree, but then as Charles said, society has built itself in a way where in general, what you have is a society where, as Charles put it, as sorry, as Steve put it, um, I'm trying to weed out the bad actors where you can only fake it for so long. But when it comes to the actual test where you either sink or you swim, you'll find out who's faking and who's, who's real. You will find out who can actually do the job rather than someone who can't do the job. Um, and then there's also the idea of, um, of social class where based upon the decisions that your parents make, you might find yourself in a certain position um, where you have to work a little bit more harder than other people. Um, which I guess you could argue what this influencer money may was getting at. Um, the backlash came, of course, from the fact that it didn't, she didn't seem to sympathize with people who, for whatever reason, because you could argue that this, 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 um, makes a good point though, Steve, this, arg this argument that, um, this, this doctor that you mentioned, she's one, but she's probably, as Charles put it, maybe the exception to the rule, because for every one of her, there's like a hundred people who don't make it. 
So, you know, how, how do we argue it? How do we argue that? This is, this is a tricky one. What do we think about that? I, I, I don't think it's all that tricky, actually. And, and I, I want to give, give Charles some charity here. He's absolutely right in some degrees. And, and we'll take myself, for example, right? Um, so do you, uh, in, 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 in the UK, is, is your college uh, free to, to citizens? Or do you actually have to, like, pay for it? No. So what it is, in the UK, we have this thing called Student Finance England, which is essentially loans. Um, and what happens is, um, depending on what level you're at, you, you pay for the loan and everything. They pay the university, you go and you pass and everything. And then you pay that loan back by when you work, go for a job, when you earn a certain amount of money. Essentially, it's basically like a tax, essentially. And the tax gets um, waived after about 30, or some, 30 years or something. Um, but yeah, yeah. It's, it's a loan. It's not free at all. It's a loan. Okay. Even even in Canada, you know, they, they have they have a socialized university system, but we'll, we'll take yours, for example. So you said a tax, right? So if we understand social capital correctly, there's still a social tax, right? Assuming that you have social capital does not imply that it is that it is limitless or infinite, right? At some mm -hmm. point in time, you're going to spend your social your social capital and you've got to make damn sure that it's going where it needs to go. And when you invest in bad, uh, bad actions, then you are being taxed for that. Now, to, to get back to my point, though, is it's it, I 100% I believe that there are there are gates in which some people cannot get what they want as far as education. Let's be specific about education, because that really is the gateway to a higher, a higher income level. Right. I can't I can't just walk into a college and go to school. Right. I'm 45 years old. I make too much money for grants. Um, I can't do it. And and since I am racialized as white, there are no grants for me. Right. There, there, there just aren't any. Um, and so, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm, I'm withheld from being able to go to college and, and, and go to school and get a degree myself. So what do I do? <laughs> I, I read a, a ridiculous amount of books. Mm -hmm. Right. And but that that doesn't get me three letters at the end of my name. However, yeah. That does not mean that you can't not be successful. There's, mm -hmm. there's, you just have to be, I think, I think the argument that I would make is there has to be some realistic expectation of your ability versus the expectation of what you're going for. Mm. Cause that's a good argument. I mean, I mean, you can, you can make the argument that, um, there's the, the idea of what success is, is very subjective. Um, it depends upon numerous factors, your background, you've been brought up in the choice that your parents make. The choices you decide to make, um, the choices that you, um, the decision that you make in terms of what you want to be when you're older. Um, so for me, meritocracy, there's a difference between the subjective and the objective, like I said before, and I'm not quite sure that line is drawn. And I'll admit it, I don't know where the line is drawn at all. Um, even with me, I'm trying to go into journalism for the time being. Um, it's between journalism and maybe going to the education field, the lecturer. I'm not quite sure which way I want to go for, but essentially I'm a good writer. So it depends. Do I want to teach people how to write or do I want to actually write and do that for a living? So it's a, it's a tricky one. I'm not quite sure what I'm going for, but if I was to lean towards journalism and let's say I didn't get, I didn't get to do as much as I wanted to, but I did the, um, I managed to be a very successful lecturer. Would I consider myself to be a failure? If I'm making sense, does me not doing what I want to do mean that right. I'm a failure in every aspect of my life? Um, and so when people say meritocracy, it's more to do with, um, it may not be what they want to do, but it comes down to what you're actually good at in terms of ability and um, the skills that you have that people are willing to pay for. You know, if you're good at something, don't do it for free. If you have a skill that people are willing to pay for, you monetize it and you lose it to your advantage. Mine just happens to be writing. I do photography as well. In your case, Steve, it's 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 it's, it's mechanics, and engineering. I'm not. I'm not. I don't know about you, Charles, man. I, I've never. I've never met before, so I, I don't know what it is. Um, yeah, but whatever it, it is. Been a good idea for us to introduce ourselves before the stream. But anyhow, yeah. yeah. Um, but I mean, it's it's quite tricky with meritocracy. It's more to do with. Are you there? Are you where you are because solely upon the choice that you made? Because no man is an island and there are other factors. There are some decisions that are not in your control. Um, and there'll be things happening to you that you may not want to happen to you, but that's just how it is because of choices that other people make. Your choice will affect yourself and others. And other people's choice will affect you and other people. So it, it, it's really tricky. What do you think, Charles? 
Okay, so I'm going to make Steve's argument for him and say, this is the way I would have put your argument. You know, um, meritocracy, your skills, your talents, your abilities, your predisposition, they, they sort of, they increase your chances of success. They do not guarantee it. You understand? Let us take any objective metric of success. Let's say we have a hundred people that want to become a medical doctor. They want to become the best surgeon ever. You understand? And they mm -hmm. all, that's the, that's the stated goal for, the, for all of them. You understand? If yeah. someone is dedicated, if someone is, um, if someone is, you know, they're, they're putting in the work, they, what that shows is that it, it vastly increases their, their potential for achieving what, what they want that stated goal but it doesn't guarantee it because something else can just come along the line and and all your work is for naught you get so that is why i still i still i still bring back my argument to look we are looking at meritocracy as that ideal which we should progressively work towards but the way society is currently set up it is not true that the, the best person always gets the job Yes, for example, okay, let's take, for example, Steve is a mechanic. There are other mechanics that is, that is working with. Your boss, could, your boss could definitely accurately measure who is more productive. But if he's going to, if, there, if there's someone else in that organization who has someone backing them up, you understand? Okay, let, me give, uh, let me give an example of um, what one of my brothers told me. He works in the banking sector. There's this guy, um, normally the way it works here, the, the bankers, they have to, after a certain period of time, they have to move departments. They have to move to another department such that corruption doesn't set in. But this guy has been on one, the loan department for years and is basically, you know, doing some shady things and is getting, is getting money off it. You get. Mm -hmm. That is not a good practice. Now, the, the branch manager of that organization doesn't like that. He wants, he wants that guy to leave that position. The guy disagrees that he's not going to be that position. And then the branch manager, using his authority, removed that guy from that position. And the next thing that happened was that there was a call from, from, from above and that guy was transferred to another branch and put in the same loan position. Mm -hmm. what, does that, what does that tell us? What, what that tells us is that the, 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 the normal thing, the meritocratic thing to have, to have happened in that situation is for that guy to have gone to another department. But there was an overriding system. You get, there was mm -hmm. another system in play that just took over. So if we wanted to apply that to, say, um, Steve and, and his job, maybe they are due for promotions. And objectively, Steve's boss can measure that Steve is the most productive mechanic in that place. But then there's someone else who is there who is not as productive as Steve, who has someone at the top, who has a vested interest to seeing his own person proceed to the next level. He wants to see the, his person get um, the promotion that is needed. How much chance do you think that Steve has with his, with, with his, with his skills? Yes, the objective re results are showing there, but in reality, it can only take him as far without you know, the sort of influence that, the, that his competitor have. So that's, mm -hmm. that's the point I'm driving at. We should look at, as much as we want to look at the theory of this, we should also look at the workability of it. So meritocracy, being good at your job, doing all that would guarantee you, no, wouldn't guarantee you, would increase your likelihood of achieving what you want to achieve, but it wouldn't guarantee it. That's true. I absolutely agree with that. I absolutely agree with that. And if I can... You know the the what what you described there is is an is a is a very good argument for why we should support meritocracy, right? We don't want people in there that aren't doing the job. They don't they haven't earned it. Um, but there's also some there's also other factors that kind of go into this, right? So I might be the best person who can physically do my job, right? Again, we go back to doctors because doctors are a really good example of this, right? So there's such a thing called bedside manner. And if you have a piss poor bedside manner, the other doctors don't respect you as much. You're, you're, you get really crappy reviews from your, from your, excuse me, from your, from your patients. And this can uh, um, uh, affect your pay. It can adversely affect your pay. 
Now let's take me, for example, let's say that I'm a, I'm a fantastic mechanic, right? But I got a, just a trash attitude, always talking down to other people, just being really, really negative. Um, I have worked with people like that. And what happens is, is if I see someone who might be a good mechanic, but has just really piss poor personality and they get, they get promoted, I'm going to find somewhere else to work. Mm. Simple as that. You know, because I believe that my merit warrants that position more than they do. Yeah. And if the owner can't see that, I will go somewhere where somebody does respect my merit and capability. So That's I think true. I think it's a I, I think it's a, a an easy argument to make that there are filter systems that we're not even that we're not even aware of that work behind this construct of meritocracy that we 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 want to see happen that actually do a better job at 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 filtering out bad actors than we can even really realize. So it, a, a lot of the times when I hear these arguments, I'm, you know, I, I, I totally get you. And I totally will give you every charitable argument for that one, Charles, because it does seem to be that's true, but that's an argument against the current system and for meritocracy, because at least at some point, hopefully the result will be better than what we have now. Well, that's, well, that's the idea. I mean, I would say there are certain people that do benefit from having connections and stuff. But in my opinion, I, I guess you could argue that society at large does need a kind of meritocratic system because it incentivizes work and innovation. And there also, there's also the moral argument to it where a person needs to be the best for the job objectively, irrespective of their background and everything. And that moral standard brings a certain level of accountability. Um, we have this thing in the UK called the Equalities Act, where irrespective of a person's race, religion, sexual orientation, whatever, the person has to be judged solely based upon what they're good at. And obviously, I know that I know that sometimes people ignore those morals, and I understand that corruption is still a thing because we're human beings. But at the same time, if you don't have that framework in place, if you don't have that moral framework in place, that is the line between total chaos and what we have now, essentially. So there is a moral standard that comes with that. So let's get into the meat, the nitty gritty bit. Let's get into part two. Um, and part two is more to do with um with social class. Um, so obviously, social class is a thing. Um, there's no getting around it. Um, it, it it's it's a thing. It exists. It happens. It's caused many conflicts over the last um since human beings have existed. It's always caused some kind of issues. So. I guess my question would be, what role does social class have to play in meritocracy? I think the example that I gave earlier was um, I th I, the university scandal in America, where, excuse me, many people were um, found to have been inherently fraudulently corrupt by buying off the deans to get their students into university, into top tier universities, um, obviously at the expense of at least more talented students who may not come from that background. So, um, you know, I understand that meritocracy has to exist, in my opinion, as, as a sort of moral framework, um, but it's not always as simple as that. So I guess my question is, you know, where is that line drawn between meritocracy and social class? What can being in different social classes give you that other classes have to maybe work harder for? Where does that, where does that line go? So who wants to start? Steve, Charles, who wants to start? If I get your question correctly, right. what's the, what's the relationship between social class and meritocracy? I'm asking like how, how social class affects meritocracy essentially. Oh, how social class affects meritocracy. Um, well, I think, I think um, social class, is just one of the many contributing factors alongside meritocracy that, that that's a determinant factor in the outcome of any individual in the first place. Because as much as um, social class comes into play in getting something, you can't be a complete idiot, you understand? You can't be a complete idiot. You still have to have some level of um, some level of skill, or competency. some level of competency. You mm -hmm. understand, or yep. 
or even your social class to be of any value. But where that deviates from meritocracy is that in a truly meritocratic system, it shouldn't matter what your social class was or is. It should be based solely on, you know, the hierarchies should be based solely on competency. You understand? Yeah. So yeah. let's say there is a there is a bar. Let's say uh, maybe let's say there's a spectrum from one to ten. From one to six is incompetence. From six to ten is is acceptable level of competence. Now, in a meritocratic system, the person who has a competence of ten should be at the top. But in the real world, anybody above six could be at the top because social class can kick in. So many other factors can kick in. You get it? So mm -hmm. in that sense, even though um, the meritocracy sort of helps to, it, it, it also factors into the hierarchy. It is not the sole factor, neither is it the principal factor as per who, um, who emerges at the top. And I think that social class is a very, is a strong component on who gets to be at the top because first of all it opens mm -hmm. you to a lot of um a lot of resources developmental resources yeah how are you so sure that this guy who is even this smart is really smarter than than the other kid who grew up in in a poor environment where they had no access to basic nutrition which may have affected their developmental process they have no access to good education they had no access to positive influences around them you understand yeah. so yeah. from the outset itself you see that the conditions are already different which will determine the outcome ultimately so mm -hmm. there's, an, there's an extent to which you can push for someone who take for example someone who grows up in a place where there is no literacy how far yeah. do you think that person could actually go in say the world of academia if you well, have a hundred yeah. people who grew up in that kind of condition, how far do you think that by personal efforts alone, what percentage of you, of those hundred people do you think could actually break through given the background, given where they're coming from? So social class sort of just gives you a springboard to, 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 just, um, to just excel. So if you're at the top of the social class, it's much easier for you than for someone who's coming from much more lower social class. I mean, you could argue, you could argue, just for argument's sake, you could argue that, you know, there's more than one kind of intelligence. Um, so for me, myself, and I guess you could argue Steve as well. Um, Steve is a bibliophile, self-admitted, and I'm trying to go into higher education. So for us, you could say it's more to do with like academics and reading and that kind of stuff, right? But in terms of say, um, social etiquette, for example, where there are certain skills that you need that is not to do with academics. If I was to get put in, say, like um, a HR firm or like maybe a hotel manager where you have to talk to these people and diplomacies, there's like an art to it, I would not survive at all. I would get absolutely finished. I would get roasted. If you put me in a library, I'll thrive. If you put me in a hotel, I'm screwed. So it really depends upon what kind of what kind of um value society what kind of values or skills that society values because society does tend to create a hierarchy where there are certain skills or certain certain skills or certain um certain things that people are supposed to attain that are considered to be more or less valuable than others um so maybe for example the working class might think it's better for you to be good with your hands. Like maybe Steve's a mechanic, but it could just as well be a plumber or an electrician or something like that. Whereas people who come from a more educational background will say, your background is determined for you because my father went to this ex went to Harvard University, for example. So I want you to go to Harvard as well. Um, yeah, so if it, it's, I don't know. I don't know, I'm, I'm so undecided. Okay, you can respond. I need to get Steve in as well. But go on, Charles. So now, for, for proper context, I'm not just using this as... Um, my, my statement is not just as a broad category of all humans because we all have different capabilities. We all have different interests. I'm, I'm looking at it specifically if 
if two people are pursuing the same goal, but yep. they are from different from a different socioeconomic class, you understand? There's going to be a difference. The socioeconomic class of of those people is going to be a huge contributing factor. Take for example, two people want to become um, um, they want to go into the say the hotel the maybe the uh, the example you just gave maybe hotel receptionist and and all that and probably there are certain etiquettes that are required to be in the hotel business and one of this person has a father who has a hotel business and he's always he's always been going with his father to to the job and he has he has naturally ingrained those etiquettes even in an informal way from just watching his father at work watching the business grow you understand mm -hmm. it places that person as a set at a certain advantage as someone who has previously no experience whatsoever but they're just trying to come into that business if both of them have the same level of passion and if both of them have the same level of skill there's going to be a sort of a considerable difference in the sense yeah. that one person had a head start ahead of the other person mm -hmm. so so in this regard i'm not i'm not making broad generalizations as far one person has a different interest i'm looking specifically at people who have similar interests and pursuing the same goal and then they are of different socioeconomic class that socioeconomic right. class has a huge factor plays a huge role in the outcomes that is true i mean steve i'll be honest with you like i'm trying to go into journalism and journalism is some people call it maybe an elitist kind of um, um field but um whatever whatever it is yeah. i don't come from that background really and so i'm finding it more difficult than i thought it would be i'm getting there slowly but surely but in terms of me getting where i want to go immediately i don't have as many resources as um someone who's been brought up in the industry does so there is an element of sort of for lack of a better word breaking into the industry as opposed to being born in it um i think that might be where the issue is where you want to create more opportunities for people who come from we want to create a society where it doesn't matter where you come from um there are certain that the, you sh that shouldn't be an indicator where you come from like it shouldn't be but sometimes it is i'm not quite sure why that is so right. what do you think about that steve it's, it can be difficult sometimes even from my experience it can be difficult So because I believe in meritocracy, and not, not only am I arguing for it, but I also believe in it, um, what we have to understand is that, that yes, and, and I will give Charles this argument, is, is that no, we are not living in a meritocracy as much as we'd like to admit it. There are some places where it's instituted. Absolutely. I would probably say it could even be 50-50 where half of society is in a meritocracy and half of it isn't. Right, because it's such a it's a, such a complex construct that we live in called society. Now, the thing that we know is that when when we when we see where meritocracy isn't being implemented, it has disparaging results, right? Mm. Because then you 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 give opportunity for dis discrimination to run rampant. You give yep. the opportunity for nepotism to run rampant, and we have these systems in place that 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 propagate the same results as they did before. Now, again, I go back to my argument where we could argue that the son of a, a wealthy business owner could do a better job than somebody who had a Harvard education in the same field because he has secrets that is not available to the Harvard, Harvard educated individual, right? Yep. But speaking from the ground up, let's say that you take someone who is, is incredibly poor, was born poor, his parents, are, his or her parents are born, are poor, born poor, poorness runs in the family, so to speak, right? Okay. How do we help those individuals? That's what I'm concerned about because I want them to play a role in meritocracy, right? Because mm. that's that's the, that's the, the that's the structure of meritocracy. Is it is it is or I should say that's the benefit of meritocracy is that when you implement meritocracy, you're constantly mush, uh, pushing the, the the board further, right? You're constantly pushing the field goal further and further down the field. Yeah. And so you're making you're making strides towards new uh, new inventions, new technology, new philosophies, new everything. Yeah, you motivation. have to have the bodies there to be able to do the work of pushing these fields forward. Mm -hmm. Right. Motivation. Right. Because if you've got somebody that you're you're in com competition with, but they've got the better people because of the merit of their ability and you're hiring people based on mediocrity. 
you're not going to get there. Even if one of those people on your team has a great idea, you will still never get as far as the people that are incorporating meritocracy. We've seen this over and over and over again. I mean, that's why mm-hmm. Apple absolutely dominated, dominated the, the, the odds, you know, the double odds is, is because he, he uh, Steve Jobs hired the best people that were in the field. Mm-hmm. And so they put out a product that it took what, a couple of years for the rest of society mm-hmm. and the rest of the industry to catch up to. Mm-hmm. And so in, in, in some aspects, we have to go back to, to supporting the idea of meritocracy. So how do we do that? Do we give scholarships to those individuals whose parents made less than a certain X amount? Maybe. I think the argument could be made there that we have to have a discussion about how we can help people get into the meritocracy, but we can never argue for their ability to succeed in the meritocracy. Of Otherwise course, yeah. you're, you're, you're basically voting for equal, equal outcomes instead of equal opportunity. And yeah. We all know how that goes. Yeah. It's, it's a bad idea. It's a bad idea. It's a bad philosophy. I mean, that, that's, that's kind of what I was concerned about because it's not to say I don't, I don't want people to do well. It's just that the more, the more you give to people rather than helping them do it themselves, the less incentive they have to kind of work for what they want anyway. You don't want to end up in a system where some people get where they are because they know certain people. And then you also have this weird phenomenon where some people can also weaponize their their non-elite status and say, I am poor, I'm a certain level of poor, therefore I am as deserving as people who are richer to be somewhere where neither of us belong because neither of us actually know what the hell we're doing. And then you have the middle class people who are saying, well, hang on a second, we know we're doing more than any of you. So why are you guys getting in? You're getting in because you're too rich. You're getting in because you're too poor, if that makes sense. And we're just middle class in the middle trying to fight for the scrap. So, I mean, I mean look, when I was in university, um, I came from like a lower income background, lower income. So, um, you know, I managed to get a, a couple of grants here and there that you had to declare how much money the household um, earned. And it was if it was under a certain threshold, um, then you were eligible for the scholarship. I earned a, under a certain amount, so did my mum. So I got the full grant on top of what I'm entitled to anyway from the university itself. Um, so and it did help me quite a lot. But the important thing to remember here that the school didn't the school didn't say because I came from that background it meant that I was guaranteed to get certain grades because when you have equal outcome it's not a good thing because it, it decentivizes people to work. If I know that for, if I know that um, I'm going to get a good grade, no matter what I do, um, there's no point in me working in the first place. So I still had to do the hard work. I still had to find myself at five o'clock in the morning to get up to go and shoot a film, then go to work in the evening. I still had to do the dirty work. It made life a little bit easier for me, but ultimately I'm the one that wanted to go to university. I wanted to get this degree in film which means that I have to be the one to express an interest. I'm not paying for them. I'm not paying for a degree. I'm paying for them to teach me to work towards a degree. There's a big difference between the two, um, if I'm making any sense. Um, and I guess oh, that's absolutely. You, absolutely. And, and I guess, you know, you could argue um, that's where a lot of people say they are pro-affirmative action because they believe that there are certain people um, that are based upon certain characteristics, such as some people would say race, sexual orientation, um, class, is especially, um, that prevent them from doing these things. Um, so it depends on really how you feel about affirmative action. Um, Charles, what do you think? Um, now, for the story you just told, you said you were paying. Uh, you were not. You were not paying to to get good grades, you were paying to get into a university to be taught. Now, for the parents of those kids who paid to get them, their kids into Ivy League institutions, yeah, the, that, that, that process itself was illegal in the first place. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming it was illegal. Yes, right? yes. Okay. Now, are you trying to tell me that a school who has broken one rule in letting in people by taking money that there is no possibility that they could also go further in breaking the rules to ensure that their kids have a certain grades? Are we, how are we going to guarantee that that doesn't happen? How are we going to guarantee that the corruption I'll, ends at them getting into the institution? I would, I'll say two things in response to that, Charles. I'll say two things. I hear what you're saying, but I'll say two things in response to that. One is that what Steve said earlier about how 
grades are one thing, but then in the real world, in the field, um, you either it's make or break, it's sink or swim. So if you get certain grades, they're going to expect some, certain things that are higher of you. If they put you into a field and they find out you've been faking all this time, you'll be sacked. Most likely you'll be fired. There'll be consequences. So, um, and the other thing is that, you know, the reason why we consider it to be corrupt, inherently corrupt, the reason why we think it's a bad thing is because of the meritocratic system where we believe in the idea of what right and wrong is and we believe that a person should be accepted into these college based solely upon what they're good at rather than who they know. That is why everyone thinks an outrage. That is the reason why it's not normalised because if we were to um if we were to normalise this idea and say, you know, um, this person got into this university because of X reason and that was normalized, then it wouldn't really be um a big deal. Be like, oh well, X um Jeff Bozos I'm going to I um got into thing. Okay, well that's not a big deal. It doesn't really matter. It wouldn't really be a big thing. The reason why we're outraged is because we have an opinion and a belief as to what right and wrong is, and meritocracy is part of that. Where we're trying to say, you know, a person's economic status or religion or sexual orientation should not matter. You get in based solely upon how good you are. And I can that's just one of the things that's just one of the things that um that, that they were they were found out to be doing that was wrong, which is why everyone's outraged. They would have been similar outrage if they got in because they were of a certain demographic of race, for example, or sexual orientation. If they were being refused because they were black or gay or whatever, there'll be similar level of outrage. But there isn't. That's why we're outraged because we believe in what right and wrong is in a merit meritocratic context. So that's why there's such an outrage. Uh, okay, sorry, Steve. Just one minute. Let me push back against this a, a little bit. Sure. Now, sure. if if I if I have a as a parent, I have the means and the connection to first of all get my kid into a school that they had no business being in. I had enough connection and resources to get them the grades that they did not deserve to have in the first place. Do you think that I wouldn't have the connection and the money to get them into a job? Where if they are not a complete idiot, they would just sit there and they wouldn't get fired. It is very, very well within the realm of possibility. It doesn't just stop at a particular point. It doesn't, uh, corruption isn't allowed to up to a certain extent and then meritocracy kicks off from, from there. You know, I get what you're saying that yes, um, no meritocracy. In fact, I would say that my university education is a product of meritocracy because I got I got my admission based solely off of my own my own hard work and barring that process I I wouldn't have gotten a university university education if if it had to do with money um like some other like some other people had to get into university by paying someone off I wouldn't have had a university education but that is that is an exception so I'm not going to use it as a rule we're going to look at the individual who whose parent had enough resource and influence to get them into a school that they had no business being, whose parents had the, the influence and the resources to get them the grades that they had no business getting. I'm sure their parents, and I am sure there are a lot of people in the world today who just go through life in that way. And they have it all easy just because they come from a certain socioeconomic class. Let's go back to, say, history, for example, and use, I don't know if you know of the Habsburg um, the Habsburg Empire, uh, the Habsburgs, they were Spanish, they were Spanish lineage. No, those guys were, they ruled, they ruled Spain for a considerable amount of time, but they were inbred. They were inbred and a lot of them had, um, they had, they had sort of congenital deformities because of, you know, when siblings and close relatives, if they reproduce with each other, it leads to a lot of problems. On the basis of competency, those people should not be should not have been ruling Spain at any point in time because their cognitive abilities would have been diminished with time based on them being inbred. But they were able to maintain power, even though you could technically say that the majority of people in, 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 the, in the empire at that time who were way smarter than, than, than people that are ruling them who, based on their genetics, were just basically idiots. But they kept ruling because they had that social class. They had that name, they had that influence, they had that power. And I don't think much has changed in this current world. So I, I still maintain my point that 
yes, meritocracy is an ideal that we should strive towards. But the way the world is currently set up, there are too many factors that comes into it for us to say that um, meritocracy is even uh, close to the most significant factor that gets people to where they're going to. I mean, do you believe that corruption is inherently infinite, where it has no limit? Because it can only take you so far, it can't go on indefinitely. But Steve, final point? Yeah. Um, you know, it, it's somewhat of a false attribution because there's there's so many unknown variables in the system that, that guide an individual through this process that it's hard to say exactly where it goes wrong. But the thing that bothers me about meritocracy, because we didn't talk about where meritocracy goes bad. This has just been a pro versus uh, um, con argument, right? But we don't talk about where uh, meritocracies go bad. And mm. generally, from what I can tell, meritocracies go bad most, most, uh, most often when you try to artificially manipulate a system um, that mm. that you 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 start to get improper outcomes, and then now it's 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 become something else other than meritocracy, right? So this this is not this is not a feature, but a bug of meritocracy, right? This is this is the thing that kind of shoots off of meritocracy, um, and and that is kind of a mediocrity. And we don't want that. We want people who are in there that are capable of doing the best job possible. But what do we do with the individuals who failed? That's that's yeah. that's a problem. We need to figure out how to help those people that did fail, or because we can talk about who who tried and failed, right? But that doesn't really leave us with anything. It's a, it's kind of like a, a non sequitur, right? So, what do we do about the people that failed? How do we help them find something that they are good at? so that we are eliciting the best possible results for that situation. Because the idea of merit meritocracy is a meritocracy itself. You know mm. what I mean? So we're trying to get the best people into the best places as, as best as possible. And mm. if someone fails up here, they might exceed down here or side to side. We'll call it a, it should be a, a sideways ladder, not an up and down ladder. But we, we can, we can reasonably assume that the result would be better if they were playing some role in the meritocracy than if they weren't playing any role. in the meritocracy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah but yeah. also trying to mm -hmm. artificially manipulate a system has detrimental and, and disparaging results as well. So it, it's like this weird, strange balance, a, a perfect balance almost where there's just enough tinkering, but not much so that we can all get together and get the best possible results that we can. Um, so that, that's kind of how I think about it. But overall, I really truly believe that, that, that merit is the best way to go because it, it self filters, not only bad actors, but it, it, it self filters nepotism, favoritism, and instead is, is really what, I mean, since we're so close to Martin Luther King's birthday, I'm going to say here is, is it, it gives us the opportunity to cast away the idea that I should judge you by the color of your skin, but mm -hmm. instead I'm going to judge you by the content of your ability, the content of your, of your character. Yeah. And that I have yet to see where that fails. And, and the detractors of that idea have never made a good argument against it. They just haven't. And so that's yeah. what I wanted to say as a final, uh, a final uh, observation. Also, I think uh, Charles brought some heat and had some really great points that I think we should be paying attention to as well. Of course. Um, Charles, any final thoughts? Yeah. So um, as a final thought, I wanted us to just go back to the definition of meritocracy that was given. Um, if I get you correctly, you said meritocracy is a political system in which economic goods and a political power are vested in individual mm -hmm. people on the basis of talent, effort, and achievement rather than wealth or social class. Mm. Did I get that correctly? Uh, yeah, more or less. I need to get it up again. I, I just typed it on the computer, but more or less, yeah. That's the framework. So based, based, off of that, based off of that definition, you will find out that meritocracy is a myth as currently as we have in the world today. There is no political system, no economic system where goods or power are assigned based off of talents, achievements, or personal efforts 
with, without regards to social class or any other factors. So my final statement is that we should, we should strive towards meritocracy. We should try to be much more meritocratic. Um, I think it's a good ideal to aspire to, but there's a difference between an ideal and what is obtainable in practice. And as, as it is currently, there is no such thing as meritocracy. So that's my final submission. Okay, well, thank you, Charles. I think in my opinion, I would say, just to conclude, I'll probably say that, you know, I believe in meritocracy as a, as a fundamental moral principle. I know that obviously isn't as easier than making it seem. I understand the element of human corruption, but we do need some kind of framework in which a person isn't judged based upon who they are, but as opposed to what they can actually do. If anything, just to preserve some kind of moral integrity in our society. Because if we don't have that, then we just have pure chaos. It's already chaotic now, as it is with meritocracy. If we took that away, then we're just asking for pure anarchy. Um, but I would say I believe in meritocracy to a certain extent, although corruption does exist. But as a whole, meritocracy um, is a thing, and I think it should continue to exist. I think it's a good thing, inherently good thing. Um, so yeah, that.